All right, guys, today we're going to go over scapular winging and the puncher's muscle. Let's get into it. All right, so what is scapular winging? Now, scapular winging is that that shoulder blade. It protrudes out from the rib cage because you don't have optimal range of motion, internal and external rotation, and downward and upward rotation, usually from having a compressed posterior rib cage, right? So what we want to do is we want to expand that posterior rib cage. We also want to work on strengthening up the muscles that allow for that scap to sit firmly and rotate appropriately. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go over breathwork protocols to increase the expansion and help the posture. We're going to work on stretching those tight muscles. And then we're also going to work on the contraction and the strengthening of those muscles that facilitate that range of motion, including the puncher's muscle. So let's do it. All right. So there's two main reasons why you're going to have scapular wing, right? One is going to be muscular dysfunction, meaning that you have shitty posture. Two, it could be a thoracic nerve pain. And when you have thoracic nerve pain with inflammation, it's going to negatively affect the serratus anterior because of the fact that that thoracic nerve innervates the serratus. When it innervates and it doesn't allow for the signaling to occur effectively, then you have a misfiring pattern or you have low contractibility of that serratus anterior, which causes or allows for protraction and allows for that scap to sit firmly on the rib cage. Another thing is that you have compression on the posterior rib cage, causing the scap to protrude out, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna increase expansion of the posterior ribs. We wanna decrease inflammation to allow for that nerve to be lessened or less compressed. So you can do things like sauna, cold plunge, that'll be perfect. You can also do curcumin or turmeric to bring down inflammation. You can also use red light therapy or infrared light therapy. I use the game day laser that allows for blood flow and decompression. So those things are gonna be good to facilitate that. We also wanna work on expansion of that rib cage. So we need to work on breath protocols to improve that expansion. We're gonna do that right now. All right, so the first one is to increase that posterior rib expansion, right? When you're compressed and you're kyphotic, that compression is going to occur. And then again, that scapula, right? So your rotator cuff is going to wing out. So what we wanna do is get expansion so that that scap can come together and sit firmly on the rib cage. So all you have to do here is find a wall, sit flat against the wall, feel your sits bones on the floor. You're gonna bend your knees slightly, you're gonna take your elbows and place them on your knees. You're gonna keep your head neutral. You don't have to push it back to the wall and don't jolt it forward. All we wanna do is get a nice rounding in the upper back and we're gonna breathe in through our nose with the tongue on the roof of the mouth. We're gonna breathe and try to act like you wanna breathe through your upper back. So I'm gonna breathe in and then I'm gonna blow out through pierced lips. And as I blow out, I'm gonna feel my side abs, my obliques, those things there to allow for me to get full expansion and then release the tension. The one thing that you're doing here, again, is like I said, getting that posterior expansion of the rib cage, but you're also doing a parasympathetic style of breath, which is going to bring down inflammation and stress, which is important if you do have thoracic nerve pain. Here we go. All right, so you wanna do about three to five breaths, about two sets through, and we'll move on to the next thing. Let's do it. All right, the next one we're gonna do is a lat stretch. And all you're gonna do is find a rack, a door frame, whatever you can to anchor yourself in. And what you're gonna do is take your one arm and you're gonna internally rotate the shoulder, grab on the inside. From there, the same leg that the arm is up, we're gonna go ahead and push it back, right? So it's gonna be staggered a slight bit. You're gonna put most of your weight on the front side leg hip. From there, you're gonna sit down into it, right? Getting a good stretch on your lat, you should feel that. And then you're gonna slightly rotate, slightly rotate towards the side that you're stretching. And all you're gonna do is give me a good inhale in through the nose with the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Okay, same thing, three to five breaths around two sets through. 
All right, so another thing that's gonna be tight is gonna be your pec minor and your anterior delt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our arm again, place it on a door frame or a rack at the gym. And all you're gonna do with the elbow slightly bent, we're gonna go ahead and just lean forward and get a good stretch here on the pec and on the anterior delt. And all you're gonna do is slightly rotate your body outward, right? And again, hold the position, get in that diaphragmatic breathing. And as you exhale, try to get a bigger stretch, right? Try to get out more range as much as possible every time you exhale. Same concept, three to five breaths, around two sets through. All right, so I'm glad to announce that I recently partnered with Merrick Health. Now, Merrick is an online health clinic that specializes in human optimization and wellness. Now, as an athlete, coach, and father that runs multiple businesses, things can get a little hectic, pushed to the side, and my health did start to decline. Now, I was at a point where I started to feel lethargic, tired all the time, not recovering from workouts, and that's a problem when you're trying to elevate and get the job done. I know I needed a change. I know I needed to find out what was completely going on from the inside out at a deeper level. Now, as far as my athletes go, I make it a requirement to get their lab work done before any training camp starts. So it was my time to do it for myself because if I can't do it for myself, I can't help others. So the importance of understanding where your levels are and what needs to be improved will drastically increase not only your recoverability, but quality of life. Now, I could have partnered with anyone and trust me, they all came up, but I decided to go with Merrick because not only were they professional, but they were meticulous on their approach to getting the information necessary to me for a quality intervention that will provide me with better health overall. Now, truthfully, if you're feeling run down, experiencing brain fog like myself, having trouble sleeping at night, or just simply not recovering from your workouts, getting an in-depth understanding of your blood work is highly recommended. So you can now purchase your labs and a complete analysis review, which will provide you with a complete breakdown of all of your levels with a qualified code. Along with that, you'll get over-the-counter options and a potential prescription treatment recommendation. Just click the link in the description and use the discount code Daru at your checkout to save 10% on your first lab order. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, so now that we worked on the posterior expansion of the rib cage, we got that scap to sit firmly against the rib cage and worked on stretching out those tight, bound up muscles like the anterior delt, pec minor, and also the lats. Now we can start to work on increasing the strength and the stability of the muscles that allow for protraction, upward and downward rotation of the scap. So the first one we're gonna do is a bottoms up kettlebell press in a hook lying position. The reason why we're gonna go hook lying and on the floor is because one, we don't wanna get too far into extension and allow for that shoulder to dip forward. So the floor is gonna help with that. Another thing is that when you're in a hook lying position, it allows for that posture to be optimized. So you're not in a thoracic extension, right? We're not too far overly exposed. The ribs aren't flaring out. We wanna stack the rib cage over the pelvis to maintain that neutral spine position. All right, so let's do it. Kettlebell, I'm gonna take a lighter kettlebell. Find that, find that wall that you were on before. And all you're gonna go into is a 90-90 position with your feet on the wall, right? And I want you to feel your low back on the floor the whole time, right? You're gonna take the kettlebell. We're gonna go, like I said, bottoms up position. Squeezing the kettlebell. With the bottoms up position, it allows for more irradiation to occur, so more force and stability through the shoulder, which is important. From here, we're gonna go ahead, punch straight up, and you're going to protract the shoulder, right? From there, you're gonna feel that serratus turn on, right? We wanna feel our three points of contact on the wall, so big toe, little toe, and heel. From here, I'm gonna come down, nice and controlled, on a three second eccentric. Then we're gonna drive up one second, hold at the top for three seconds. Three, two, one, back down. Nice and controlled, drive it up. And then hold that position, squeeze the kettlebell, bring it back down, two, one, drive it up. Full protraction without the back leaving the floor or the hips coming up, back down, control, All right? So, as far as sets and reps, somewhere around six to maybe even eight repetitions. You can go as far as 12. 
um, just make sure that you're maintaining a good position and you're not overly compensating. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so the next exercise is a staggered stance landmine press. We're gonna use the landmine, but we're also going to make sure that we're protracting the shoulder and we're not overly rotating, right? I wanna keep the chest pointed forward. I wanna keep my feet staggered and I wanna put most of my weight on the front side leg. The back side leg, the same arm is gonna be pressing and we're gonna work on reciprocation. So when one arm goes up into protraction, the other one's gonna come back. Other thing that you wanna be mindful of is the same thing on the floor, is we wanna maintain a neutral spine. We wanna maintain, maintain posture. So stacking the ribcage over the pelvis is gonna be important. So utilize a posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze the glutes and activate the adductors. You're gonna grab the landmine here. You're gonna keep the landmine right underneath the shoulder blade. So I'm not gonna to go too far forward and I don't want it too far down, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it right underneath the shoulder in this good position. From there, this leg is gonna be, the heel's gonna be off the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a slight posterior pelvic tilt and draw the rib cage. Down. From here, I'm gonna keep one arm up. Again, the opposite arm is still gonna reach into protraction. And the goal is to get that upward rotation of the scapula around that rib cage. And as we go to press, we're gonna go ahead and exhale, activate the obliques, serratus anterior, right? and you're going to maintain a position that you started from when you went to press. So we inhale. Exhale, keep the glutes on, rib cages down, protract the shoulder. Sets and reps, you wanna do anywhere from six to eight repetitions, keeping it in a reps and reserve of five to six. Again, nothing super heavy because you do not wanna to compensate to allow for that motion to occur. You wanna keep everything nice and stable and functional, right? So keep everything optimal when it comes down to your weight. The range of motion needs to be, again, where it needs to be to maintain that neutral spine position and also get that protraction to happen too as well. So two to three sets, six to eight repetitions on an RIR of five to six. All right, so now we're gonna be working on the posterior side and we're gonna do an incline dumbbell alternating row. Nothing special here, but the goal is to have something stable to lay on and we do wanna get expansion on the posterior side. So when we go to alternate, one arm's gonna go, the other one's gonna reach, all right? So we're still maintaining that position. We still want rotation of the scap around that rib cage. All right, now we're gonna be working on the rhomboids and the traps here, a little bit of rear delt. The reason why is we're gonna be going into an abduction, a slight abduction of the arm away from the body. So if I were to bring my elbow in closer to my body, I'm gonna hit more lats. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my arm away from my body a slight bit, probably about 45 degrees, and then I'm gonna roll back. All right, so here's what it looks like. Let me here, lay it over the bench. Again, draw the rib cage down. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a posterior pelvic tilt. Again, breathe in, good expansion. And then I'm going to row and then pull back. Other side. Again, I'm keeping my chest on. I'm not extending here. I'm just gonna work through this range. Feel it a little bit in the rear delts, rhomboids, and mid traps. You wanna do anywhere from two to three sets, and again, six to eight repetitions on each side. All right, so the next exercise is what we call a vertical band pull apart. And this is going to hit the long head of the tricep, which is gonna help with downward rotation of the scap. It's also gonna hit the rhomboids, the rear delts, the mid to low traps. And you're gonna also have to utilize your lats to maintain the position. You wanna get a mini band tied up to a rack or a door frame. The bands you can get from Elite FTS. The only reason why I say that is because I've been using their bands and have been using their bands for 20 plus years and they've never done me wrong. So the band is from Elite FTS. And they don't pay me for that either. So we're gonna take the band. We're gonna go ahead and do like a straight arm lat pull down. 
Again, making sure that you maintain a neutral spine position, draw the rib cage down, squeeze the glutes, and then hold the position there. So band is stretched out, the lats are engaged. I'm maintaining my spine position. I'm not overly extended. And then from there, I'm gonna pull the band apart to my hips. And inhale, pull it apart. Don't let the band pull you back up. Still maintain your position. And as you go to press out, you're going to extend, expand the band. Do it again. Very important here that you don't overly extend. It'll cause this to happen. Draw the shoulder blades down. And it again. Don't need to do a whole lot of volume on this. I would say six reps at a good tempo. Same tempo would be good. One second, three second hold, three second back. And then also from a set perspective, two to three sets with good form, good technique, and good tempo. All right, there it is. All right, so the last exercise that we're gonna do is for the low traps primarily. All right, it's gonna help with that upward rotation of the scap. You wanna go light with these, two and a half, maybe five pounds at the most. We'll keep it from a rep range perspective, six to eight repetitions, same tempo, all right? You're gonna take an incline bench or you can do it lying down, but the goal is again to maintain that neutral position of the spine. So. I got the incline bench here. Draw the rib cage down, abs tight, glutes on. Thumbs facing up, not in. And we're gonna go straight up, hold, come back down. All right guys, so there you have it. If you have any dysfunction or you have problems or have that scapular winging effect happening, make sure that you follow these instructions or do these appropriately. Again, we wanna make sure that we're getting expansion of the posterior rib. We're bringing down inflammation. We're increasing range of motion in tight tissue that is causing kyphotic posture. Those two reasons, like I said, bad movement quality or muscle dysfunction, and then also thoracic nerve pain. If you're having pain in your neck, in your mid back, obviously go see a clinician, a qualified PT, DPT. You can also work on decompression and anti-inflammatories like turmeric, curcumin, red light therapy, sauna sessions, cold plunge, and soft tissue work to alleviate that stress, to allow for that thing to relax and allow for the serratus to activate and help the scap actually rotate around the rib cage. Another thing is again, work on contraction of the muscles, work on increasing the strength and the stability of the surrounding tissue. So the serratus anterior is gonna be one, but also anterior delts, long head of the tricep, rhomboids, mid and low traps, and a little bit of lat too as well. There you go, hope you liked it. I know you guys, you wanted me to expand on a video or short that I did that went over the puncher's muscles, serratus anterior, that helps with the scapula rotating around the rib cage. So there you go, hope you liked it. Comments down below. See you guys next time, peace.